The desert, like any environment on Earth, is a result of a critical balance of geologic conditions. Climate, topography, and plate tectonics interact to determine whether an area will be, say, a desert, or a forest, or a prairie grassland. Human activity, however, is capable of disrupting this natural balance, triggering a chain of events that can cause desert to invade a non-desert region. This process, called desertification, can be frighteningly rapid, and its consequences can be staggering. Consider a fertile spot like this. Its most obvious characteristic is its color, green. The green color arises because the vegetation absorbs the sun's energy in all wavelengths except that of the color green. This absorption of energy means there is less heat available to warm the overlying air. So the air is cooler and more likely to produce rain. The chance of rain is further increased by the fact that the vegetation is an important source of water vapor released to the air through leaves. If great amounts of vegetation are destroyed as land is developed or overgrazed, the bare earth may be exposed, reflecting heat back into the atmosphere. If there are no trees or plants to store heat and release moisture, the air gets warmer and drier, and there's less chance of rain. With no tree or plant cover for anchorage, the topsoil can erode rapidly, discouraging new plants from taking root. If the region lies in a semi-arid climate or near the margin of a desert, this destruction of soil and vegetation may convert it into new desert. This change may be permanent for all practical purposes. For once desertification starts, it takes a costly effort to stop. In the United States, the most dramatic example of desertification occurred on the Great Plains. There had always been a very delicate ecological balance in this region between the very slight rainfall and the fragile plant life. When ranchers started overgrazing the land and farmers began overworking the soil, the situation became extremely dangerous. All it took was the great drought of the 1930s to turn the plains into a raging dust bowl. Fortunately, thanks to conservation efforts and a series of wet years in the 1940s, the wheat lands of the Great Plains were eventually saved from becoming a desert. It remains to be seen whether the result of more recent and even more catastrophic desertification in Africa can ever be reversed. This is the Sahel, a semi-arid region to the south of the Sahara Desert. In the 1960s, a series of abnormally rainy years encouraged farmers to expand their herds and grazing lands. Then in the early 1970s, there was a terrible drought. The plant life of the region was virtually wiped out. Some 40% of the cattle died by the 1980s, continuing drought had completely denuded the soil, creating choking dust storms and migrating dune fields. The desert was creeping into formerly verdant areas at an average rate of 10 to 15 meters a day, destroying the livelihoods of over 20 million people. More than 100,000 starved to death. The suffering was particularly acute in Ethiopia and the Sudan. The sad irony is that modern technology helped to magnify the disaster. Prior to the drought, deep water wells had been drilled in the Sahel, providing abundant new sources of water for livestock and humans. 
This stimulated an excessively large migration into the area. So when the drought struck, there was even greater devastation. <laughs> 